We need, we need some masala. On this planet. So, uh, the, are there any other questions on electricity? Yeah. We have looked into that. There's lots of different ones, like uh, uh, flywheel is one I kind of like. They you you get the they have it they do it they do it in the space modules where they power up with solar a giant flywheel that's spinning so fast they have to put it underground or in a steel vault in a in a spaceship, <laughs> but. The power goes off and the thing keeps spinning for, they've got it uh, spinning in a vacuum, so there's no friction, and it just keeps spinning and producing power as, as it slowly, slowly winds down. So you're storing power in momentum. And then there's, uh, you know, storing power by getting something up high and then letting it come down slowly. And there are a lot of, then battery technology, actual cell battery technology is getting better because of battery cars. So. I think batteries are the weak link in what we're doing, but and people will people will give us static about that. They'll give us static about anything they can, and what I'm saying is, it's worth it all. I, I realize that. Well, we we actually came up with a good line for that. We're going to make a T-shirt of it. There is a lot wrong about the way we try to do things right, and that's the truth. Uh, we batteries are bad, but they give us the freedom. They give us a, a dependency, and from that dependency, we're opening up our minds to the point where we can see way, way beyond. And batteries got us there. Batteries are wrong, but they got us there. It's kind of a thing like if you're climbing a mountain, you aren't always going up. Sometimes you're going horizontal and even down to get to a place that you can go up from. And we're, we experience that all the time. So when people rag us about batteries or the bad insulations that we use or... It, you know, which there are many things that we do that aren't perfect, but we're just simply trying to get to a level from which we can see the level beyond. And you know, it's like I've even made a diagram. I have to, I'm visual, so I have to make little pictures for myself to understand what the hell I'm thinking. But uh, so I'm like, you know, I'm standing here, and uh, here's a big plateau, and uh, there's a peak here, and another plateau, and over here, and there's a peak here. Well, my line of sight, see, this is the ultimate peak right here. This is nirvana or whatever you want to call it, the solution. I can't even see it, you know, uh, so I don't even know it's there. So I get here, and I still can't see it. And, and maybe I have to do some weird stuff to get here, you know, and some weirder stuff to get here and to get here. And finally, I just get so I can see it. But what I'm saying is I have to get however I can to a place where I can at least see where I want to go. And that's, that's a big issue with the whole situation right now. People are stymied down here because they can't even see where they're going. And all I'm saying is just get me higher. Get me higher. And I'll, then I'll be able to see what's beyond. And who knows, when I get here, maybe I can see something else. But uh, it's, a whole, it's a, an approach to everything, really, that uh, filters back down to whether to use a windmill or solar panels in what kind of a climate. Uh, yeah? So have there been any applications on any airships that have been built with like hydro wheels or stuff like that where there's been a running source of water, a river, or a lot of rainfall? We've, yeah, we've had a few of them that have, one, the one in Scotland had a little hydro, had a little spring coming out into the lock, mm -hmm. uh, so we tapped into it and, and a windmill. So between the hydro and the windmill, we made up for the fact that Scotland doesn't have much sun. So hydro is worth it. If it's, there, there are many places where hydro is cool, but the percentage of places where hydro is cool is very minimal, you know, compared to uh, sun or even wind. So hydro is last on the list, but it's certain any time there's any form of energy, uh, we would be tapping into it. Yeah. One other question. Uh, have you heard of this high-end form of electrolysis that is used to separate hydrogen and oxygen uh, molecules and then store the hydrogen in the hydrogen? Uh, heard about it, but not that familiar with it. Okay. And when it is, hydrogen is being talked about a lot. It is coming until it's here. Yeah, it just takes, yeah. It just takes the hydrogen oxygen. But, well, they the solar, yeah. so. but they can do it from solar. And they're <coughs> it's, it's up and coming. It's just not as easily available yet. It, it, it is very 
documentary. I saw a documentary about it. That was based, uh, in Denmark, I said very like that. Yeah. And, and there, are, there are a lot of other ones, too. And we're set up just to, you know, glom them in to this whole concept anytime they're there and available. What we're looking at is there's a part of our work that is uh, totally research, but then there's a part of it that is mainstream. What, what, is, what have we got from all of this 40 years of work that we can put into the mainstream right now have an effect on where the mainstream's going? Yeah. Uh, well, we have, uh, we w used to use the golf cart batteries that, you, that last five to seven years because they were cheap, lighter, easier to handle. But I got, you know, when I got into so many buildings out here, there's always one building that you're replacing batteries on. So I, I didn't want to switch to the 20-year batteries because I figured battery technology is going to radically change in 20 years. And I'll be stuck with these 20-year-old batteries that... Uh, I don't need, but the power system is set up to, you know, you can interchange batteries as battery technology evolves. But we have moved to the 15-year batteries, and some, the Phoenix has 20-year batteries. And it is nice, because we don't have to do anything. You know, they cost a grand a piece, and there's six of them. Uh, but once they're there, they're there, and I don't have to think about it for 20 years, and that's kind of good. So we're down to the, the, roll, the, the brand is uh, Rolls uh, batteries. And they're big and heavy. They're 400 pounds. They take a lot of people to carry them, and they're they're but they just last. They're deep cycle, and that's and then that technology itself is is evolving rapidly because of we're staying closely behind the uh, electric cars because that's where the battery technology is getting money put into it from, and so we're that stuff will be available to us in the not too distant future. Do you have a question, Paul? Yeah. Um, why didn't you just get a That's a good question. Uh, we uh, could have. We could just get trout and, <laughs> and not have to be dealing. You know. uh, well, I, I guess uh, there's not a good reason for that other than tilapia tastes good. Tilapia grow fast. They prolifically multiply. Uh, there, were, there were some rationales, but nothing really worth anything. <laughs> so, we're just doing it. You were <laughs> you ever, food. Yeah. I was wondering if, like, as far as communities go, you've looked into any sort of small-scale um, centralization of power because, like, the spots we're looking, it's all forest, so you don't really have the option of putting, like, solar on each unit. But we were thinking about doing, like, a central location for power. Have you done anything like that? Um, no, I can't say that I have. I, I, I am... See, like the EVE project, it will have... A, it will be approaching that thinking because um the, like fee is a bit like financially it's hard to do a solar setup if you want to do like a cheap dwelling you know you can't really well that's another that. thing uh we we are looking at like yeah there's twenty five thousand dollars to thirty thousand dollars worth of utilities in each one of these buildings so if you're going into something else what we're doing uh is taking uh the EVE is going to have, project is going to have uh, something on the order of that. In other words, this whole jungle, this Amazon jungle that goes from the end of this building to the other one, is the gray and black water system for 25 people. That's, central, that's centralization on a small scale. The, uh, the water <laughs> catchment is going to be shared throughout all the buildings, putting cisterns wherever we can and then tandeming everything up for everybody. And the power... Uh, that's one of the major things we're trying to work on with Eve is uh, the power is going to be room at a time. In other words, now that there's, see if, if you get down to a very minimal amount of power with a few LED lights trying to light up a room, then we, we, stick, we hang a piece of thin film out somewhere on the south panel and uh, run some 2 watt LED lights and that power is so small that the battery to store it can be sealed and in line and can be in a drawer of a dresser. So it all of a sudden gets to be, for 350 bucks, you can light up a room as opposed to 30 grand for six rooms. So we're taking the, and, and so what I'm getting at there is in some ways we're adding the element of centralization on a small scale 
In some ways, we're even decentralizing further to make every room. Because, see, this is going to house 25 people. Each person's really just going to have a room. They're going to be sharing the Amazon jungle. And there's even shared showers and toilets and stuff. Uh, so their room is the only thing they have, and they have their own power for their room because it's 350 bucks per room to, to power up a room. They will probably share the AC uh, off, of, off of one or two. See, in, these, in this group of buildings already, there's three power modules. We're going to try to use those three power modules to do all the AC for the computers and TVs and whatever, and then give everybody in each room, or maybe a couple lives in one room or whatever, but everybody in each room, their own power. So we're thinking on a small scale in that direction, and it's, it's not that, we, that I would say you, you have to be a fanatic and totally decentralized, but uh, when you get into a situation, you'll find that if you're willing to decentralize to some extent, you can take steps. We're always willing to do anything. There aren't, we, you know, we, make, we don't really have any rules. We just have directions because you make rules and all of a sudden you're encumbered by your own damn rules. We need, we need some masala.